Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, Episode 90, How John McAfee Builds Freedom. Welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Ash Oro, and today we've got an amazing guest, John McAfee, and joining him, Janice McAfee. I appreciate both of you coming. Uh, most of my audience will know who John is. He's a serial entrepreneur, cryptocurrency OG, an international man of mystery and mayhem. John, Janice, thank you so much for joining Liberty Entrepreneurs. Well, thank you for having us. We're having a blast. And the reason we're coughing, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, is because we are we are seeing how well we can actually do these podcasts. While it's really, really stoned, right? So. So far, so good. I think. <laughs> you know, the, you really got the intro. <laughs> yeah, we're talking. I, I guess that, we can that, talk. That's half of the task. I mean, it's it's your body. Why should somebody else be able to tell you what you can or can't put in your body? What what's free about that? Yeah, that's all point. Yeah. <laughs> See, and here's the thing: people say they're going to outlaw cryptocurrency. Of course, they are. They're going to outlaw the outlaw cryptocurrency which is the cryptocurrency developed by us the people monero bitcoin and ethereum and all of it but they will bring their own cryptocurrencies of out course. and say well these are better well yeah they are definitely better for the government because mm -hmm. they will allow the government to monitor every fucking penny mm -hmm. you make and spend and where and when and why and it will be all over people you are now you will be known from your pennies up to your love life. It's like the best possible system I they agree. could design to track everything that we do. You know, the government hates cash, except when it benef benefits yes. them and their so, friends. Anyway, so, when, so when they make these cryptocurrencies illegal, keep in mind, in America, they made weed illegal 75 years ago uh, with severe penalties. Sometimes dozens of years in prison in some states for mere possession of marijuana and yet i've heard of people who smoke it so <laughs> john you had a really treat, good quote treat the other these day laws, treat the laws against crypto the same people right it's it's no crime to spend your money privately and, and, to, and, make, and to make your money privately it is your fucking business it's not the government's it's, it's yours and who you choose to tell about it and no one and that also is your business the majority of the life is voluntary outside of government rule and so you know what's to stop voluntary people from engaging with each other besides the force of the government and we have the power now with this tool the the distributed exchange that i created well it has no kyc right. it has no uh am it has no anti-money laundering um nothing we don't even ask your name it's a true email. free market pardon yes. it's a true free market it's a true yeah we don't control anything and we did it by putting the logic into smart contracts on the blockchains now when the sec says you've done okay we're shutting you down I, so shut it down i'm going uh, how, gee, how are you gonna sorry. do it how am I going to do that? Why don't you guys do it? All right, because you can't do it either. Nobody can do it. And I'll just say, I'm really sorry. It never occurred to me when I did this, or I just forgot. Oh, yes, you guys want to know what people are doing. So I forgot to put that logic in here. And unfortunately, it, it can't be changed. It just slipped now, my mind. It slipped my mind. Now, <laughs> th 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 I will still get punished if I get caught. You need to understand this. All sure. right. Um, however, I've done nothing wrong, people. Have I? Is it my job? Mm. Is it my job to stop crime as an entrepreneur? If that's true, it is a fucked up world. No doubt. And yet, they expect exchanges, they expect uh, social media companies, they expect everybody to insert into their products little back doors, uh, little entryways uh, that they can get in and know everything about everybody. Everybody's an unpaid government agent. And, yes, and I exactly. wanted to build in this community one thing which they can't shut down 
and which I will admit here and criminals can use. But please, criminals can use automobiles as getaway cars in bank robberies. Criminals can use telephones to organize and coordinate. Does that mean that telephone companies have an obligation to give the law enforcement access? No, because that also gives them access to us. See, law enforcement's not looking for somebody specific anymore, like it used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. We know who we're looking exactly. for. Help us find him. That's one thing. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Help him find him. But we know there are crimes going on. We know this. You know this, America, so you know we're not lying to you. Sure. And if there are crimes going on, how are we ever going to catch them all unless we watch everything? everything. Yeah. yeah. You well, see the logic that we have we have accepted that implicitly in accepting the laws governing students. Well, some of us well, have. I did, I did not accept yeah. them explicitly. Yeah. Neither should anybody. Have you people ever heard of civil disobedience? Right. Brought about in the early uh, years of America where people had the right, we still do, simply not to obey a law that is unjust mm -hmm. and in no way affects others other than self. When did you start? So, when did you start? I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask, when did you start seeing individual freedom of something that you were drawn to? When did this start become a perspective in your life? <laughs> I don't know. It happened in my teens. Um, they because but, because society's it. all a lie and you seem to figure it out a long time ago. They always called me an unruly child. <laughs> okay. I believe it. That was simply a symptom of, I was just trying to free myself. You understand? Mm. I mean, thank God I couldn't back then, but I was trying to free myself from parents. And God damn, I knew more than they did, at least I thought, right? Mm -hmm. My teachers, they're sitting me in a fucking chair for six hours every goddamn day. And they're saying the same words to everyone. And you expect me as an individual to get any fucking benefit out of that or for anybody to get any fucking benefit. So I was not going to cooperate with what I saw as idiocy. Mm -hmm. you know, my, my dad made me get straight A's and I always did, I promise you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I made them in the most unruly fashion that a teenager <laughs> and stay in school. Now, I never, never got suspended. I never even got fucking sent home. Mm. I'm sure that surprises so a lot I of the listeners. You, I, skated, I skated that edge closer than any teenager has ever skated. That fucking edge. I was just being as free as I could. When I got out of the house and finally got free, I kind of wished I was back in the house because I'm going, whoa. <laughs> Heat. Yes. Like, that's stupid it's winter time we all deserve heat i gotta pay for it yeah i gotta pay for heat and i gotta pay rent why so i didn't pay rent at home plus my rooms were nicer all right so yeah but that that from that point on and i'm joking about wanting to go back i did not mm. i didn't give a shit what came i was no longer going to obey an authority right they did not understand me I mean, or anybody. And how did entrepreneurship play into that? I'm sorry? How did your entrepreneurship play into that? Ah, my entrepreneurship. Okay. Well, like I said, probably at the age of five, I started to rebel. When I was nine, I started to rebel financially. Okay? So I realized that nobody in my neighborhood liked to mow the lawn. Nobody. I mean, you know, husbands were putting it all, oh, you know. So I, I knocked on every door in the neighborhood, dragging my lawnmower with me in the summertime and said, I'll mow your lawn for $1.75. Right. Okay. Which back then was more, but still, most people go, Really, kid? I mean, you're th I could see them thinking it over. Someone's going to give you $1.50. I go, Well, I'll take it. Um, but I mowed every lawn in that neighborhood every summer. For mm. four and a half years. In the wintertime, it snowed. I was in Virginia, uh, in the Shenandoah Valley, Blue Ridge Mountains. Snowed everywhere. 
nobody likes shoveling. <laughs> I mean, first of all, where's the snow shovel, right? Yeah. Oh, it's behind the lawnmower. You park the lawnmower over the store, whatever. See, nobody likes yeah. this shit. Right. Okay. So, but I had a snow shovel and I would get up every morning. Back then, weather reports weren't as accurate, so I wasn't always sure it was going to snow that night. You know, I made my mom get me out of bed at 4 a.m. Okay. And I'm looking out and I'm, so I'm testing the depth of the snow. How much can I charge for this shit? You know, the heavier the snow, the more I got to charge. Right? <laughs> and at first light, and I knew which houses got up at six and which houses waited until 8.30 and knocked sequentially on these doors. You know, Ms. Young, do you want me to shovel your walk this morning? Okay, and you know, I'm, I'm making sure that there's as much snow on me as possible. Right? Sure, so yeah. Got to sell it. I've been buried in fucking snow <laughs> up here. You know, and I'm holding like this and I'm shivering, right? So right off the bat, psychologically, yeah, yeah I'm gonna turn that kid though, down you know? unless he's unless <laughs> trying to fucking rape you monetarily. <laughs> yeah, okay. right. So no. So uh yeah, I'll do it for two dollars, Mr. Jones. Okay, yeah, here. I get my money first, okay, because adults. <laughs> Even cheat children, yes, don't you know? Yes, they okay. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaking out, going to work while I'm shoveling, and then uh, forgetting for weeks to yeah. pay me shit like that. <laughs> no, and and it's never a good thing to get into the debt collection business. So I just let it all drop. As a as a kid, ringing ringing doorbells with that snow shovel, like, hey, uh, you want to pay me? Then, then when I when I was eleven. <laughs> I've, I um, uh, understood, or I've, I encountered paper routes. I mean, I've seen people giving papers, didn't know shit about it. And they came by in little trucks in one section of the neighborhood and where we lived. And we put the newspaper in a little newspaper mailbox thing next to the mailbox and drive mm -hmm. Well, as I got to be 12 and discovered the world more and got out more, I discovered that most newspapers delivered by kids carrying these newspaper sacks door to door, folding them and putting them on the porch or under the mat or some convenient place so that it never got snowed on or rained on them, 12 to 15. Um, so I inquired, what is this scam going on here? <laughs> so newspaper boys don't work for newspaper companies. They right. buy the newspapers. Okay, long ago, somewhere in the ancient lost darkness of history, someone invented this concept. We don't know who, but now there are assigned routes with with uh, your customers that know Billy. Oh, Billy, the paper boy. Everybody calls, oh, that's Sean, the paper boy. I mean, that was your name because everybody knew the paper boy. Sure. Well, I go, now if that's something. No, I ran the numbers and paper boys got a fairly decent salary for boys. I mean, nothing wants moms and dads, but enough. You can buy your friends a meal every now and then, or a pack of cigarettes, or treat them to a movie, and have shit left over. But the big deal was Christmas. It was mm. on Christmas. Remember, you were delivering everybody's home. Right. And for an entire year, you'd be knocking on a door every Saturday. Hi, Mrs. Jones. Uh, Dollar uh, twenty-five for the for the newspaper. Oh yes, dear, I'll get the money. They give you a call and you tear a tiny little slip, proving they've paid you. And in your book, you've got the little ragged edges hanging out, saying these motherfuckers haven't paid me for months. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good system. And uh, they give you money. Sometimes they give you a tip a quarter. You know, so the tips, the tips double your salary. But Christmas, uh, Christmas now, <laughs> special fucking day. <laughs> It's it's the day of of giving, and I always told my customers in advance. As Miss Smith says, we're going out of town on, on Christmas. You know, on, on out of town on Saturday uh, uh, after Christmas, um, and so I won't be able to collect, and I got to pay. You know, would you mind if I came on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? Oh no, no. She comes a paper boy dragging and God, please God, let there be snow. So you're looking for <laughs> but but put the snow back on you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
invisible and wet. So uh, on those days, I mean, I've gotten anywhere. Nobody gave you less than five dollars. Nobody. Mm. Well, fuck me. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money back then, too. Three months of income right, right. there for five dollars. Just five dollars. <laughs> One person gave me fifty fucking dollars. He was he was a uh, television exec in Roanoke, Virginia, a little town not far away. He had this much, I guess, fifty dollars. Do you realize how much fifty dollars is for a twelve-year-old boy in nineteen? Oh. 57. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's no, unbelievable. Like, you you yeah, could take your friends out to dinner forever. I did $35,000 in cash. And I was like, <laughs> whoa. Okay, so after that, I got it figured out. So then I started subleasing paper routes. Mm. And instead of letting people be their entrepreneurs, whereas if you don't collect, you don't get paid, you don't make any money. And if you can't keep, your, keep all this shit straight, and right. you only get a twenty percent from the paper discount, so it's a tiny margin. Um, so instead of that shit, instead of you don't want to go through that, you want to lose everything. Tell you what I'll do. I'll pay you twenty dollars a week. All you gotta do once a day, go out, pick up the papers at three fifteen, right after you get off from school. Mm -hmm. Walk up. Two hours later, you're done. Twenty dollars. That's a good deal. So for every dollar that they got paid. I, on Christmas, myself or my trusted... You would deliver the papers, right? My trusted right? <laughs> would do the collecting, not right. these people. Okay. Right. <laughs> of course. We would come collect it, okay? And um, the people my associates were trusted, I don't know they're not going to skim me. We were making a fucking fortune. Legally, absolutely. By hard work, it was not an easy thing. It was newspapers on Sunday mornings. They feel like your ass is carrying the fucking world. So by the time I was 18, I had more money than my mother, father, grandfather, everybody combined in my family. And, that and was how, how I started. And that's how, how did, I started my own Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And how did that experience compare to the experience that you had in school? I mean, every kid seems to, you know, that required to go to school and governments have a monopoly for the most part on our school. And here you were building your freedom by becoming an entrepreneur outside of school yes by never doing my homework no i could i don't have time to work and do fucking homework right i promised my dad i'm going to get straight a's or respected and he trusted you know he's a hard motherfucker but when i said i'd do it he knew i would i got always had straight a's i never did anything at home mm. I, I i would try to get sick days as much as possible i don't feel well today mom <laughs> stay home call please for me and then I'd get up and I'd go get the get the gang together and go, okay so the paper I think here's the problem we're having <laughs> right you need to do this and you then, need to do this. Then I had to go back to school the next fucking day. I mean so and what a waste. Anyway, right. I, 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 you get the water for me any any kind. I, I've got a I, I've got a I've got a little red meat question here for you John. I, I think we see eye to eye yeah, here. Yeah I've you I've been dominating no, the conversation. Fine. This is interesting. <laughs> I've never heard I, this story before. I, 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 I love it, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well oh, this it gets, it, gets, it gets stranger as I get older. I mean, oh, it, I, please, got into please. college and I really did have free time. Because let me tell you, when I'm in class and if I have to get a, a grade or something, I will do it. If I have to stay so focused that the only thing that exists in the entire universe is this professor and what he's saying. So I always got good grades. But in college, man, you don't have to hang up there for six goddamn hours a day. You got one class three times a week. And the college professor doesn't give a fine fuck whether you show up or not. Right? Because at the end, you either pass this test or you don't. But but they get paid either way. Fucking heaven. This is great. The few classes I did have to attend, like um Organic chemistry, God, I hated that class um, in college. Uh, that I did have to go, I managed to pass them without doing any outside work, mm. just in in the lab doing shit and and learning it and then passing the test. So I had total free time, total free fucking time. I mean, it was easy for me to 
pass all these fucking tests in college and grad school. Like, who couldn't? They're all trivial shit. So, mm-hmm. and, and yet I had to be doing this in the war back then. You couldn't do anything if you didn't have a degree or an advanced degree and, and whatever. You just couldn't. So it had to be done. But I arranged it in such a way that it did not interfere with my real life, which was making money uh, and building things. Uh, so the biggest thing I ever fell into was selling magazines. This is my first year in college. I'm no longer a 12 year old. I can't do paper rounds. Anymore. I mean, although there were men who made a living doing just what I were doing, and even at 50 years old, were still doing the shit that I was doing when I was 12. Mm-hmm. But I could never have grown beyond what I was there, all right? And those men at 50 were exactly what I was at all in terms of financial freedom. So what's the difference? So I moved on, selling magazines. I don't know if we have time for this one tonight or even talking. Is there we, any? We, 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 we've got all day, John. You know, I think it's best when people just tell their stories because it shows the passion about building freedom. It's what this whole show is okay, about. Okay, all right. So next, okay, now this was, whoa. Whoa, so now I'm in college, all right? Um, and he's and, handsome. I've seen pictures of him when yeah, he was yeah, younger. So, so I have, Full head of hair. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have three talents, okay? Uh, number one, I'm talented with the ladies. Number two, I don't even have to study, and I'm the smartest kid in school. And number three, I know how to make money. Right. right? So, so right now, at that age, if you said you, your life is going to stop here and you continue living, but nothing will ever change, I go, take me back to my freshman year in college. Please. <laughs> he goes, I was the fucking king. I mean, literally the fucking king. I had my own apartment, freshman own apartment. I would get no support from anybody. Oh, yeah, I did get a scholarship in college <laughs> uh, because my grades in school were so fucking awesome. They just gave me an academic scholarship. So I didn't have to pay for school, all right? That's the other thing. So I wasn't paying for this. And I was getting an awesome education. Uh, and I was just living my life, you know, drinking and chasing women, figuring out how to make money until I stumbled off this guy that's, that said, you would be perfect for what? I mean, you know, either Ben Franklin or international. What are you talking about? Oh, dude, you don't know about them. Well, the magazine companies, Ben Franklin and International Magazines. Huh. I go, I've never heard of them. I mean, I've heard of Look and Time and Better Homes and Gardens, but who the fuck are these? I don't know. Do you know how magazines survive? Um, I go, yeah, they sell subscriptions. I said, no, shit, man, they get shit from those subscriptions. They survive off advertising. Mm. So the big thing is, the more viewers you have, the more readers you have, the more money you make, because you get more advertiser where you can. So two enterprising people about 30 years before I came on the scene had to figure something out. If we could double a magazine's um, circulation, then that magazine company would dance or do one of two things pay us a lot of money or pay us and give us those magazines for free. Right. They're not making money on subscriptions. So it says what, and this is how they did it. They came up with a system to literally in a year's time, double the circulation of whatever magazine was willing to pay them. But this is how they really made their money. Okay. They really made their money through the system that they developed. I'll tell you how I came in the system as John McAfee, I am your route manager for International Magazine. And Mrs. Jones, have you ever won anything before? Okay, let's back up a step. That's, that's me on the job, okay, mm-hmm. on the street. Okay, let's back up to how I got into it. He's describing it. How does it work? So he said, follow me. He took, took, me into, took me over to Rona, this massive fucking house with hundreds of telephones and women sitting on the phone, all of them reciting the same exact thing. Mm. And the sacred book they were all reciting went exactly like this. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Williams, this is Samantha from Ben Franklin Magazine. And I'd like to say, have, have you ever won anything before, Mrs. Williams? 
I know. Well, perhaps you should sit down then, because what I have to tell you, you are going to want to sit down. You, Mrs. Williams, won a 60-month subscription to Life, Better Homes and Gardens, Look Magazine, and any other five magazines that you choose. These magazines were absolutely free, Mrs. Williams. All we ask you to do is pay the mail and the handling charges. The reasonable. And our relatives who will be out tomorrow to give you your guarantee. Oh, well, thank you. All right. I'm the route manager. Yeah. I've got a list. They called everybody. They, they went by city block going house after house after house. 90% of them all said yes because they called during the, the husbands were at work and the people left at home alone. What do they do? They're reading magazines all day. All day. Back then, there was no internet. They're reading right. magazines. In walks the route manager. And you came in to close That's the me. deal. Yeah. Mrs. Williams, John McAfee, International Magazine. I, I, I came here to deliver your guarantee. And then Mrs. Mrs. Williams, have you ever won anything before? I mean, how do you feel right now? I said, oh, this is wonderful. I said, well, can I come in just for a second, Mrs. Williams, to explain how, how you'll get your magazines? Sure. So I come in, the little old lady, um, and me. And I'm 19, 20, with a beatific smile. And, and already good with the women. And acting like, pardon? I said already good and with act, women as well. And, yes. and acting like that <laughs> I could be anybody's yeah. loss. Right. So anyway, so now, Mrs. Williams, um, here, here is the issue. The magazines are totally free, and as they explained, we only ask to pay the man mailing and handling charges. And that only amounts to 85 cents a week. And nobody wants to mail in a check every week for 75 cents for 60 months, mm -hmm. do you? Oh, no. Um, so we have different payment plans. Uh, you can pay the phone up front, which is uh, $460. And um, you don't have to write any of the checks. Or we have a plan where you can write uh, one one check a year for five years, or you can do one check a month. Mm -hmm. Which plan would you like, Mrs. Williams? So right off the bat, you see what's happened here. Uh, <laughs> what pain plan would you like for these magazines? These are true. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I close that deal, and I got a check up front, Mm -hmm. for 400 and some dollars. And if the check worked out in a week to be good, in other words, cashed, I got $200. Wow. $200. And, and, and about what year? Yeah. In 1960, per, per house. Oh, and really? I might be 35 in an afternoon. Wow. And I will close 10% of those. Mm -hmm. So I'm making between one and three thousand dollars a day hmm. as a college freshman who is, what, not, who is not going to classes yeah i was gonna say it's like it's like here we are here we are again <laughs> with the polarity between going to school versus going out and building something and finding out how to make money well, yes i mean and i didn't build anything i, I admit uh, and and was i taking advantage of somebody just fuck no what they've been mailing and handling charges, even though it's four hundred dollars, was still one fifth of what they mm. would have had to pay by buying the goddamn magazines or subscribing. Everybody wins. The lady gets her magazines that won't fit the cost. Magazine company doubles their subscriptions and makes a fortune. International magazine gets paid a percentage of that fortune that they make, and I make two hundred dollars per close. Everybody's happy in that system, as I right. see. And I, in 1960, as a 20-year-old, and packing home an average of $2,000 a day or seven days a week. And um, no, I didn't like weekends. I did not like weekends because men answered the door. The husband. <laughs> and, and you didn't quite have it in with them. Worse with the sun, okay? <laughs> yeah. I hated it when the sun answered the door and the sun was, was in his 40s. Uh, they would say things 
why don't you get an honest job, son? Because this is in Southern Virginia, right? That yeah. back, you know. Uh, I'm going to count to ten, and you better be off my property. I'll be clear, son. <laughs> so they didn't give a shit about the smile, right. all the charisma. Yeah, like trying to attack the Bastille with a toothbrush. No, that was nothing. Hey, eh? so but but other than that. And I only did that for two years and made more money than God. Um, you, know, you, you, ha you had a great... And, and at the same time, at the same time, I was experimenting with money. I mean, I was losing it constantly. Mm. Um, I experimented with everything. Gambling. Thank God I'm a mathematician. It only took me about a month to figure out, okay, that's why I lost all the money. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, so, I, I'm everything. Kidding. I'm curious when you figured right. out, yeah, I'm really curious when you figured out what government money was and that it wasn't real money and it was like this fake monopoly money uh, and where like gold, for instance, or now Bitcoin is money. Like, When did you start to get, become questionable? Of the, 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 fir the first time I, I traveled overseas when I was 16 and I went to England for the summer hmm. had to stay with my distant relatives. And well, not that distant, my cousins, um, and spent the summer there. And realize that, that not only are accents different and customs different and choices between coffee or tea, um, but money is, is different. I mean, it looks different, okay? And, and I'm thinking, how does this work? I mean, so it really, it's just paper, it seems to me. I mean, in my hands, what, hmm. what, is, what is it that gives this? This because how do you compare this to this? Oh. This is equal 3.74 of that. Right. Well, that didn't explain shit to me. <laughs> what does that fucking mean? Okay. So that's the first time I started thinking about it. You can't help but think about it. If you're a 16-year-old, you're out you know, in the world, and suddenly you see a new thing, money, right? Um, and everything that you've thought about what made your money valuable, you're like, that's very strange. How can this have any fucking value? But you're buying shit with it. So that started me thinking. Yeah. And did you go into gold? Like back then, did you start seeing gold? And did you go into gold? Did you start seeing gold and silver as competitive monies? I've been in and out of gold and platinum and silver more times than I can ever count. Mm. Um, it, listen, when we start talking of these things, store of value, uh, there's only one store of value. And that's your own experiences and your abilities to get what you want wherever you are mm -hmm. in short order i mean it, how many times have i been busted since i've been with you a few, <laughs> a few. <laughs> okay. um we're bust, literally busted so that we're i'm counting money going fuck me this was six years ago i think maybe five so i'm counting money I thought we're going to have enough, literally, to eat, okay, unless I can figure some shit out. Okay? And then two years after that, we're buying multiple multi million dollar houses, mm. boats all over the fucking world, yachts, and then again, nothing. It doesn't fucking matter, people. Here's the problem you think that what you earned is yours. No. The only thing that's yours is this and this. This is yours. What you've earned can be blown away by a tornado, eaten by mice. Or stolen or from by the government. Stolen, lost by your own food. Right. You don't own that shit, I promise you. As long as it's with you, make friends with it and use it. Mm. You don't know. stash it, motherfuckers. Use it. It does no good to anybody rotting in a dark safe behind a concrete wall. You had a no, because I have, I have lived this life. Pardon? You had a really great quote that, that spoke to me on Twitter. It says, freedom is not an idea. It's an experience which puts all other experiences to shame. I was wondering if That's you could say something me. I would say, because that, that is correct. You, you did say, yeah, you did say that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's about a week ago. Oh, uh, okay. But I, I guess it is true, but it's not. Yes. People go, OK, like today I, I did a tweet. I very seldom do real intense tweets about me. I did one today just about 
why quit McAfee? You know, I mean, I wanted to see the world. I want to see what that was like. I couldn't do that and be at McAfee. Couldn't do both. I've actually oh, got that. I've, I've got that quote right now, if I could read it. Which quote? Yeah, the one you're talking oh, yeah. about says, yeah, I left oh, McAfee. Please, yeah. Uh, yeah, I left McAfee Inc. Because I wanted to see what life was like being able to do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, wherever I wanted, and to own anything I could possibly want. That was almost 30 years ago, and I've learned so much. Yeah, well, that, yeah, and what I've learned is that you don't own anything, people. What you own owns you. Like me. Let me give you an example. I had mansions everywhere, Colorado, the, the, uh, the uh, Gulf Coast of Texas, and Ecuador, and Hawaii, and uh, Mexico, and Arizona, literally massive, massive states. And um, some of them, I never even set foot in after mm -hmm. it took five years to build because I was now off on something else. Mm -hmm. Every one of those things owned me because in the wintertime, if a pipe broke in Colorado, and I had to have a staff of people constantly in all of the states to maintain them, I said, oh, we have a major problem, the water broke, and it's, and it's going through the ceiling. Who owns who? Do I own that house? Right. Or does that house own me? Because every single contact with that house has been one of the helping fix me, mm -hmm. do something with me. If you problem. So no, you don't own anything. Everything you think you own is a bar in the cage that you have constructed for yourself. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious, John. Um you, you grew up in deep into the the original internet the internet of information whenever it was coming about and i'm curious how you see the internet of digital assets now block the blockchain internet and what types of similarities you've seen for offering an opportunity for us to build freedom between those oh here oh thank you this is i'm sorry no, go ahead. Okay. okay sorry so yeah, this is definitely something that, that I can talk about. The block I use every aspect of the blockchain, which is freedom promoting. My most recent, there are two companies now that have created blockchain addresses, domains on the blockchain, which if you don't have your keys, no one can change it, shut it down, or do anything. Mm. And you may do what you wish with that. So that if you have a web page, some government or some person or some regulatory body says, oh, that is offensive. You, know? mm -hmm. um, you can have live video of John McAfee eating children uh, on your web page. Um, you can say, fuck you, because nobody can take that domain nor can they shut it down because it is blockchain based. Now, if that does not give personal freedom, I don't know what does. It also, it also gives personal responsibility and, and possible problems. I mean, people could be putting out all kinds of atrocity, child pornography, that you can't stop. But <laughs> you can choose not to look at do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's an example, and they're all over. I mean, the blockchain, why does it give personal freedom? Because it is a trustless mathematical system. Trustless meaning you don't have to trust the person you're doing business with, especially with smart contracts, but the logic of the smart contracts protect you both, making sure that neither can fuck the other one. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that's one of the main problems in human relationships? Sure. The inability to trust. And I'm not saying that's that's bad. I'm not saying you should trust. I, in fact, I'm I'm far more with the covert agencies trust no one. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, a trustless system sure takes a burden off of one's shoulders. So personal freedom is written all over the blockchain. I mean. It's what we've been waiting for. Uh, are we going to use it? Uh, 
that's the question, sir. Are yeah. we going to use it? Yeah, are, are yeah. we going to use it or are we going to remain silent? You know, you 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 had another good tweet just a, a few days ago, maybe weeks ago. It says somebody asked you on Twitter, why don't you just pay your tax bill and come back home to America? And you said, my friends, wait to, yeah, it says, why don't somebody ask you on Twitter? Why don't you pay your tax bill and just come home to America? And you replied. With, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes yeah. people, if anything really <laughs> irritates, it's people's naivete. I mean, anybody who could think, all right, I'm on the run. I'm trashing everybody, the SEC, the the IRS, the FBI, I mean, trashing them. I mean, mm. publicly on Twitter, calling them festering hostiles on the, <laughs> on the face of America and shit like that, and bragging about it and continuing down the pike of creating a distributed exchange. It can't be shut down. And I'm just going to go, okay, all right, all right, I give up. I'm going to go pay my taxes. Leave me alone. No, the world doesn't work like that. They don't want, you said they don't want your money. They want your silence. But they give a shit about the money. Right. They, they want my silence. End of story. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what What do you have to say, like maybe some advice for for young people? I know that the majority of, of your fan base or your followers are in their early to mid 20s. You know, what, yes. what, what from your experience, John, what can these people do to start building their freedom? A lot of them don't have jobs. Some of them have to still live at home with their parents. You know, it seems kind of dire for them from someone who's done it you what type of advice would you have for those budding liberty people i would say trust life mm. trust life and and stop thinking about the what ifs what if i start what if what if that because you're letting what if influence what is and you don't want to change what if you want to change what is mm. and if your existence is one of discomfort or like you have a hole in the center of your being that cold air is going through or you feel disconnected from society whatever you feel the, the problem is your disconnection from yourself. That you're no longer doing as you used to do as a child, which is, what did you do as a child? You did what you love, to right. the extent that the adults allow you to do it. Right? I want to play kick the can, or you know, just run and jump, or climb a tree. Mm -hmm. That is what you lost. And you settled for, what might be, which is I gotta have a job because I gotta feed my family and mm. me. But do you go to your work every morning? Which I did, by the way, I did in this manner. Go to work every morning. Like that child being let out after school and dancing in front. If if you're not feeling that, quit your fucking job. Mm. And stop worrying about the future. Because if you have half a brain and at least one hand with opposable thumb and fingers, you can't starve in this country mm -hmm. and start from that. That's my advice. You know, I've got one more quote that you said recently that really spoke to me. Um, as I'm an, an anarchist and a capitalist, you know, a, a peaceful anarchist, um, I believe that taxation is theft, which I think we share that opinion. But you said something, I am slowly and regrettably coming to the conclusion that the public does not want the truth. They want something that is simple to understand whether or not it corresponds to the facts. You know, is there any light to that, to shine on that? Or do you think that we have to go through a lot more suffering as a society before we find and build a truly peaceful society? I, I don't know. I, I, if I had the answer, I'd be doing it something to help that i don't know i really don't know i'm an old man i'm 74 years old. I, i've seen far you know more and done far more than i remember that's how old i am i 
it's a medicine fade and fog my teens or early twenties. I don't know. Um, and so I, I don't I don't have uh, an answer to a question which has been mulled over by you know thinking people for thousands of years. Mm. And, and yet there seems there has to be one. Right. And then for me, the answer now is a simple one. It's not not some vast philosophy you need to understand or origins of the universe or man or religion. No, no, nothing's very simple. Life is based on economy. Hmm. And economy is based on a common form of currency. That's simple. Mm -hmm. And over the years, the currencies of the world have been created and controlled by the powerful. And for the first time, people, we don't have to buy that. Mm. We're living in a world where the luck will line up four billion people and shoot them all. Those mm. are you know, shooters. If we civilly disobey the madness and the corruption that has evolved, over the past few hundred years by taking control of our own finances without the need for banks anymore, without the need for you know, financial institutions to control, because there's nothing to control. Then it would seem that some should go, wow, that's so simple, yes, and then actually do something. And what happens is, wow, that's so simple. Yes. And then go back to sleep. Right. Like it never happened. Like the the uh, the light was never turned on. So this is why I wrote that. I, I don't have an answer, but I will continue to do what I am doing to whatever tiny degree it may it may be effective, because I, I don't know what else to do. I feel like well, you thank have. You. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. Thank you so much for coming on Liberty Entrepreneurs. You're you're a true visionary, and you've been building freedom your entire life, and I really appreciate it. I, I wish you the best in health and safety, and you know, keep keep building freedom, John. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, my friend.